Diablo 2 has a great system where you farm drops, get gear, farm more drops, get rare and better gear, and it all pales in comparison to rune words anyway. This is my third video talking about Diablo 2 items because they're just that fun to discuss. Having discussed the top 10 best and worst uniques, go check them out, they're alright, I decided it'd make for a bit of fun to talk about the most broken part of the game. Originally, Diablo 2 released with limited gearing choices, with a rather unimpressive lineup of unique items. Therefore, the gear that most people used were the rare or magical choices, since they tended to be superior to most unique items. With the release of Lord of Destruction, Diablo 2 got a massive upgrade to uniques and set items that could drop, allowing for many more choices. Rune words were also added, powerful enchantments that required a particular number of sockets and runes to complete. There was a calm balance in this time, patch 1.09. When patch 1.10 came out, however, there was no more balance. Rune words released in this patch were so insanely strong, many builds were born from the sudden gear possibilities, and likewise, many items became antiquated before the unstoppable might of rune words. But this isn't all bad, they do make the game a lot of fun. As opposed to a list format, I'm just going to pluck the, you know, real, real juicy rune words and discuss their strengths a little bit. Some of the fun ones, you know. Let's start with an item that every guide, regardless of spec, usually says you need to obtain. Call to Arms is a 5 socket item using the runes Amral, Mal, Ist, and Ohm. Gives you, you know, this and that, plus 1 to skills, some increased attack speed, pretty good enhanced damage, some magic find too, a little life stolen per it, and then, oh yeah, you know, like over a thousand HP points on any character you want. Yes, as a trend, you'll notice the best rune words are going to be giving you new baseline skills that most classes typically can't use. In this case, Call to Arms offers three unique barbarian skills. To be honest though, this item could delete every line of text besides plus one to six battle orders and it'd still be powerful enough to feature on this list. On the subject of Barbarian, let's talk about two weapons. You know, those things that are usually used to slap things instead of just giving Sorks a thousand more HP. Grief and Last Wish are two melee weapons that truly did remove most of the conversation about best melee weapons. And yes, Last Wish is here despite the fact that it requires more currency than you could find in the United States Treasury. At the extremely over-the-top cost of Ja Mal, Ja Sir, Ja Burr, you can have a weapon that has just an outrageous number of stats on it. Last Wish is a fantastic item for PvM and PvP, if that's your thing. It gives the players some defensive assistance with Fade and Life Tap, a slew of offensive power, and is in general an exceptionally great endgame weapon. Grief, for the far lower price of F-tier Low Mal Ral, is far, far better. Isn't that sad? Perhaps the most desired melee item in the entire game, Grief offers seemingly mediocre power since it has no enhanced damage. Instead, you have this little line of text that reads plus 340 to 400 damage. This is raw damage. What does that mean? Well, I actually have no idea. There's a lot of discussion over this item and what that line of text does. All I needed to know, and what you need to know, is that raw damage stats are ridiculously good. And it shows! This item is a metaphorical Greyhound bus of a weapon. Let us discuss casters a little bit. In Diablo 2, in my opinion, casters are far superior to melee builds. Melee is a lot of fun, but it constantly runs into problems with actually killing stuff. Casters should have an issue with this as well, where immunities to particular elements halts your progress, but since you can fashion yourself a little number called Infinity, you can stop having to consider what's going on in the game. Infinity grants the wearer Conviction Aura, a natural paladin ability. This greatly reduces the resistance of all enemies within its radius, able to pierce through immunities. Infinity is made from Bear Mal Burr Ist, which is, you know, very expensive. Not gonna be a day one item. Probably will be. Bot. This item has a unique drawback, though. It's a pull arm, so this is going to prove prohibitive on many characters. This means despite the fact that it offers so much power, it comes with enormous drawbacks to your health and survivability, if you can even equip it at all. Oh, wait, yeah, that's what- never mind, there is a way, actually. Step 1. Absolutely obliterate and delete your non-Act 2 Merc. Step 2. Get a defensive Act 2 Merc from Nightmare, so now it just pulses frost everywhere. Step 3. Give this polearm to your Merc and never again consider another type, especially Barani. Step 4. Question why this was allowed and why the Mercs are so strong that they can solo the game. Barani cannot solo the game. Okay, but what if you wanted a caster item that you can actually use? Well, look no further than Heart of the Oak, a weapon that gives you mega mode strengths, plus 3 to skills, done. A huge chunk of cast rate, you got it. Random power if you want to slap enemies? Yeah, sh d j sure, good, delete it, get out of the way. More max resistance? You know it. Finally, yet another random ability designed to give you, like, 1000 more HP? Uh, yeah, yeah, there, stack it up, here it is, Heart of the Oak. There's your item, that's all you're gonna get from me. Ever find yourself having no strength against Uber Duriel, one of the most common enemies in the game? Feel inadequately prepared to kill anything without getting detonated. Look no further than Exile, a 4-socket paladin shield which is primarily used by people who want to smack ass with their shield. 
Exile is an amazing smiter piece, giving a life tap proc chance, uh, you know, life tap of course being a necromancer specific spell, which is hilariously broken and basically grants infinite HP, ooh. So yeah, if you want to face roll some bosses and have next to zero difficulty completing anything, put Exile on a smiter and bonk your way to victory. Now let's back up and talk about the early game a little bit. Upon making a new character, you're going to have to endure a low amount of mana, stamina, constantly annoying you, and finally less resistances than you'd like. That's why Stealth and Ancient Pledge are among some of the greatest items in Normal, and are even pretty good in Nightmare. Ancient's Pledge is essentially the tutorial rune word made from Ralor Tal and any 3 socket shield, and it gives you resistances. Wow, cool, good, nice, next. Stealth is an absolutely bonkers item that you can get in Act 1. Comprised of Tal F, it takes an otherwise slow clown of a character and gives it some Nikes. Nikes, of course, being metaphorical for running speed, cast rate, hit recovery, stamina. So yeah, starting the game off on the right foot gives you smooth sailing into the many challenges of Sanctuary, which are mostly Stygian dolls, gloms, and all of Act 3. I think I'm narrowing down to the end of what I want to talk about today. For returning players, hopefully this has jogged your memory about what is good and fun to smack people with, and for new players, this will give you an opening foray into the world of breaking your characters. Oh, it's fun. Before I bring up the elephant, let's discuss a couple of Merc slash U options. The body armors of Chains of Honor and Treachery are pretty amazing choices for attempting to not die. Chains of Honor grants you very straightforward strength. Chunk, Chunky, and Chunko, this item puts the more in armor, giving you just a lot of everything. A late game powerhouse, most builds in the game will do just fine with this equip. In comparison, Treachery looks awful, but good news, it's not. Treachery can proc Fade, an ability which basically gives you infinite HP. Now. Instead of tanking the damage, you're avoiding it, which is pretty good. Yeah, has another few benefits, you know, he's got some things for combat, and in general, you're looking at a pretty fantastic item here. But unfortunately, it's all for naught. These body armors have one thing in common, which ruin their general viability. Quite simply, they are not called Enigma. Enigma is perhaps the greatest item in the entire game, by far, with nothing to remotely contest its position of being ridiculously over the top and strong. Ja Ith Burr is so famous that people have tattoos of it. Is that good? Unlike in the game, however, it won't allow you to break all physics of our world and devastate balance. Plus one to teleport. Hard skill point. This is all the item truly needed to be insane. Instead, it, of course, has amazing statistics otherwise. Run speed, immense defense, two to all skills, more life magic find. This is what we call balance. Well, that's all I got for you today. After my rip-roaring success on my TF2 video, I felt like hitting up Diablo 2 again. Uh, just a little bit. I have many passions, you know, so if you too have many passions, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed, liked the video, commented on the video, mailed me some money, and check out the next video I produce. There's the list. Get on that whenever you got a minute. Uh, this has been Seer, Internet Gaming Channel Stupid Man, and I hope you have a good day. <laughs>